Good morning, everybody. Today we are gonna to be working on the app again, and I'm sorry that this is not as consistent as it was earlier. I was planning on doing this every day, but then a war broke out and I got an apartment. And so a little bit has changed since then, but we are gonna go work on this app. First, we need breakfast. I'm in a full-blown apartment right now with like a fridge and a shower and a kettle. So I'm actually able to store food this time. We're gonna go ahead to the grocery store and get some, uh, get some non-perishable items. Oh, oh, check this out. You can see I have oatmeal but they don't have sugar in their oatmeal the same way that we do. So it's basically just like little dehydrated peaches and oats. We'll need to get sugar or something. <laughs> Somebody said in one of my earlier videos that they should make a compilation of me walking downstairs. But you guys don't understand, I do this because it fills up content. Like it just makes the runtime last longer. <sighs> that right there is our supermarket. You can see that it's a supermarket because they've got lots of food hanging on the window. But this is gonna be the first time we go shopping where we're actually buying food for like long-term consumption and storage. Oh, there's peanuts. And spaghetti. So I don't actually have a stove, so I don't think I can make spaghetti, but I do have a kettle, so I can boil water and do it like I did in Lebanon. I'm not sure how, le how noodles will work. Okay, I take it back. I actually just want breakfast right now. These four bananas all together cost less than a dollar. We are also gonna pick up one of these uh, zero calorie sugar-free energy drinks. They're Georgian. And we'll get something to say hi to do with. This should keep us going for a coding session. We've got a super important question we need to find out right now. Do bananas in Georgia taste like bananas in America? They smell the same. God damn it, open up your little banana. Okay, moment of truth. It tastes sweeter. And then again, I haven't had a banana in a long time, so maybe I don't know. Yeah, this was like, I don't know, 20 cents? Not bad. We are going to stick the bananas right next to the oatmeal, so that later on, when I'm having oatmeal, I can stick banana slices in it. Yeah. Let's make an app. This is where we left the app last time. We've got three tabs right here, workers, transactions, income, but this isn't actually that pretty. I want, I want an icon right here. I want graphics, workers, transactions, and income. So let's go pop some pictures in these guys right here. Now, the thing that you need to know about programmers is that we always have to Google stuff. We don't know things off the top of our head, so what we're gonna do is we're going to type how to add image to content page. What this means is we have this content page right here. We're trying to figure out how to add an image to this. So we're just going to ask Google to give us the answer. Okay, so we're going to use this thing right here. It says icon image source, but we actually need some pictures for this. So we are going to go steal some pictures from the internet and pretend like they are ours. This one looks good for me. We're going to save this. Then we are going to add a new image set. And we are going to call this workers tab. We have this be workers tab. You can see that the picture is there, but uh, it is a touch big. So we need to go resize this image so that it fits the proper thing. I think this is, needs to be 30 by 30 pixels. We're gonna open this up with our favorite imaging editing image editing tool. Anything should work with this actually, adjust size. We're going to set this to pixels, 30 by 30, and then save. We need to stop this and we need to have it rebuild that asset. Now, you'll see here that this has 1x, 2x, and 3x. That is supposed to be the actual resolution of this. So if this was 30 pixels, this one needs to be 60 pixels, and this one needs to be 90 pixels. So we need to go make three of these images directly. So this one needs to be adjust size 60 by 60. And we're going to undo that and we're going to do this as adjust size to 90 pixels. 
and then we're going to save this as yeah so we've got three images here we've got the original which is like high resolution then we've got this small one we've got the two times and we've got the three times let's go add these to the project right here so one times needs to be workers tab two times needs to be the slightly higher resolution and then three times needs to be this big boy let's run the app again Okay, we can see that we have the correct icon right there. Now that you guys understand how that process works, I'm gonna go do the same thing for the other tabs. You know, just go look for some images, steal them, resize them, throw them in my app. Um, that's actually a lot more prolific than you would probably think it is because it's really hard to actually take legal action against small creators for like plagiarism and shit like that. So um, if this blows up, I might consider actually like making my own assets or like hiring an artist to go do this for me. Until then, we steal. So I don't actually have a knife, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to stick the banana on the side right here, and we're going to use the spoon to cut the bananas into the oatmeal. Look at that. This whole meal costs like, I don't know, 52 cents. Okay, so you can see here we've got all three images. We've got income, we've got transactions, and we've got the workers. If we look in the code, we can see that I added the workers tab PNG right here. I added the logs tab PNG right here and the money tab. What this actually looks like in the assets folder is three things, logs, workers, and money. Money tab is just three different sizes of a money bag. Workers is just three different sizes of the pickaxe and logs is just three different sizes of this notepad. I stole all of these, but this is a learning experience. So we're not going to care about that right now. Next thing we need to actually add content to each of these pages. We need to actually fill this with each of the workers. We need to fill these transactions with all of the transactions that have occurred. And we need to show them how much money they're going to be making across different time spans. Now, before we actually just run into this code and start trying to throw things up there and make it look all pretty, we want to plan what it's going to look like first so that we have a map of where we're going to get there. Let's start planning. Let's go ahead and draw our phone out right here so that we know what we are working with. We know we've got a little notch. Now, we've already got our tab set up. We've already got our pickaxe miner. We've already got our transaction logs. And we've already got our money bag. In the actual list, I want to have the name of the device, so like a Note 10, an iPhone 7, whatever, and then a speed that they've got, so 3.27, 6.36, and then each of these will be split up in a scrollable list. So that's basically super easy. We've got one piece of text right here, and we've got a speed right here. That's all that we need to do. We need to put this in a list. Now we need to go into the code and we need to make it look like that. There are two things that we need to do first. The first is we need to actually lay this out. We need to tell it where each of the piece of text is going to go, that we want it to be scrollable, that we're going to have a list of items. After we've got this laid out, we need to actually go add a bunch of items to the list to make sure it works. So first, we're going to hop over here. We've discussed that this one is the first tab. It's the workers tab. So we're going to put everything that we need in between these brackets right here. And we said we want this to scroll, so we're going to add a scroll view scroll view. Everything inside of these will now be something that we can scroll. We said that we wanted a list, so let's add a list view. Now everything inside of this is going to be a list. This is going to look a little bit weird, but we need to add uh, some text to be able to get this to work right. So this is just the way that it says they have to do it. You have to make a template, then you have to make a dotted template. But if we actually want the text to show up, we're going to add something called the text cell. Text cell, we want the text to be the name of the device. We want the detail to be the hash rate. This might not make any sense to you right now, but that is fine. This will make more sense in a second. This says that we've got a scroll view, and in that scroll view, we've got a list of items. Each of these list of items is going to have a name and a hash rate. And as we just keep adding these names and hash rates, it will just keep adding them to the list, which will let us scroll through them. But you can see that nothing is showing up here, right? That's because we haven't actually added any items to this list yet. Let's go do that, popping over here to this file. So we're going to break this over here. We have a very simple class called worker. This worker just has a name and it has a hash rate. You're able to get it, you're able to set it, but it's basically just some strings. Over here, let's go add some workers to it. So workers.add new worker, the name, we're going to say it's a note 10, and the hash rate. 3.75 kilohashes per second. And then let's actually add this to the list. So list.items source equals workers. And save it. You can see here that we have note 10 with 3.75 kilohashes per second in our little scrollable list. Let's say that we want to add a bunch of these. We're going to call this one iPhone 7. 
tablet. And I don't even know. You can see that we have all of our little items here. The problem with this is that we're just typing these out ourselves. We want to be getting these from the internet. We want to know what all of their workers actually are. So in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to actually use the internet to go ask the website what all workers they have and then to get each of these values, the name and the hash rate from the internet. I just want to remind you all that my goal here is not to be a tutorial. I'm not trying to take your hands through this. I'm trying to show you what the process looks like in a generally entertaining way. So I will try to keep this much lighter on the code and more visually showing you how this progresses.